I appreciate this. Without you guys, I would probably be a piece of somewhere. Now I'm a piece of with money. Let's go! If it wasn't UFC, I'd probably cook in a trailer in prison, so. Work harder. No food for you till you finish. A fighter of many opinions, labelled by some as psychotic, there is no doubt that Sean Strickland is at the very least authentic. His rise in the UFC has been well documented, deemed controversial by some, his personality is loved by many. Often Tarzan's MMA ability and the adversity he has overcome are understated, so let's have a look back at the rollercoaster career of Sean Strickland. Born in Corona, California in 1991, Sean Strickland's upbringing was troublesome. He grew up in a household with a physically and mentally abusive father. He has mentioned on multiple occasions where he feared for his mother's life. Yeah, I gets on top of my mom and he starts strangling her, right? And he's like, I'm gonna kill you tonight. So me being a little kid, I get up. I'm like, fuck, the only thing I see is the guitar. My sister's guitar, she's still mad at me about it. I grab the guitar, smack it off his head, grab the phone, call the cops, run down the hill. Oh my God. Looking for guidance, he turned to his grandfather, who put Strickland on the path of becoming a neo and white supremacist. Strickland would say, My grandfather was like six foot seven. He just kind of filled your head with crazy shit. When you're a kid, you don't see that, you hero worship him. This toxic environment took a toll on his life outside of home. Strickland would be expelled from every school he attended and had fallen into a seriously dark place. Strickland's upbringing had developed an antisocial personality disorder that had alienated him from his peers. He spent many nights alone in his garage, hitting his punching bag whilst watching Old Pride and UFC fights. Unable to find solace at home or school, Strickland was desperate to find an emotional and physical outlet. His love for MMA led him to a nearby gym where he said he was humbled, getting his ass kicked, which pushed him into the world of mixed martial arts. At 14, Strickland attended his first training session and fell in love with the sport saying, my first training day was the first time I ever felt happiness because it was like, this is what it feels like not to be angry. It was within the walls of the local gym that he found solace and purpose. MMA was therapeutic for Strickland as he tried to manage the traumas he had developed through childhood. The gym allowed Strickland to assimilate into the real world, helping him to communicate and build friendship with others. That prejudice that Strickland held towards other ethnicities started to dissipate in the gym. A lot of things too, like a lot of people who helped me out in my life, they weren't white. Like a lot of like ethnic people were the ones that kind of held their hand out. And next thing you know, the people that are helping you out, they're not even white. So it's like also another shameful thing that you have to like come to terms with. Like my entire life I hated you just because you're colored. And now you're the one fucking helping me out. From here, Strickland became enthralled by the MMA lifestyle, dropping out of school and setting his sights on becoming a professional fighter. He would turn professional at 16, debuting in the King of the Cage promotion. His start in MMA was excellent, finishing four opponents via early stoppage and winning one decision. He held a 5-0 record at just 19 years of age. Despite starting undefeated and pursuing his desired career, Strickland became discontent with the fight life. He was dead broke, riding his bike to training, and as he saw his peers start to head to college, he had a change of heart and wanted to finish school. His motives was to finish high school, get enough college credits to sit the GED test, and join the army. The night before he returned to school, he went to attend a party at which he would be arrested for fighting. Charged for two felonies, he would get the charges downgraded and was released on bail after two days. Unable to pay his bail bondsman, the only way he knew how to make money was to return to fighting, so he reconnected with the King of the Cage promotion, who got him a fight in South Africa. He has stated that without those circumstances, he most likely would have never returned to MMA saying, taking it back to King of the Cage, when you first start fighting, you're fighting for like $500. It's a hard thing being a fighter. You've got to love it or have no other options in life. Due to Strickland's circumstances, both of these reasons rang true and it was from here Tarzan developed into a serious beast. Sean would win his next two fights, granting him his first title shot against Brandon Hunt for the King of the Cage middleweight championship. Strickland would miss weight, meaning he could no longer win the title, but would still win by TKO. The outcome was replicated in the rematch, where Strickland made weight and won via TKO in the first round, winning his first belt and improving his record to an undefeated 9-0. He remained undefeated in the King of the Cage promotion, holding a 13-0 record before he would get the call up to the premier MMA promotion, the UFC. Strickland had realized his dream of making the UFC roster and would make sure to take this opportunity, submitting opponent Bubba McDaniel with a rear naked choke in his debut. The Strickland hype seemed real. Strickland would join various fighting camps in hopes to become a more well-rounded fighter. After a decision victory, Strickland would suffer his first professional defeat against Santiago Ponzinibbio via decision. His start in the UFC was somewhat shaky with a three-fight win streak halted by future welterweight champion Kumaru Usman. He would go 2-1 in the next three fights, which included his first KO loss of his career, and his career was stagnating at this point. 
In 2018, though, he would endure a career-altering incident. Stricken was involved in a serious motorcycle accident that threatened to prematurely end his MMA career. Going 45 miles an hour, a car would turn out in front of him, resulting in Strickland becoming unconscious upon impact for three hours. He would ultimately require knee surgery and was advised by doctors to not fight again. Sean knew though that if he was capable of returning, he would, undertaking serious rehabilitation and training to return to the sport in just two years. On November 14, 2020, Strickland returned to the UFC, moving up from the welterweight to the middleweight division. Strickland went on a five-win tear in the middleweight class, as he found it easy to cut weight. During this streak, he picked up decision wins against fellow ranked fighters Uriah Hall and Jack Hermanson, and quickly became one of the hottest prospects in the division. Strickland's wild press conferences and unhinged comments made him one of the most recognized names on the roster. This is my first press conference. You guys are a bunch of vicious Oh man, I made the champion mad with his frosted tips and his watch. Oh no! It was just when the Strickland hype train started to go mainstream, it all came crashing down. Strickland ate two clean shots from one of the best stand-up strikers on earth and a future champion, Alex Pereira. Strickland has since won two of his last three fights with his split decision loss to Jared Kananir, highly debated. He convincingly defeated the ranked Nasadini Marvov and TKO'd rising prospect Abus Magomedov. He now sits sixth in the division, and with the current landscape of the middleweight division, he looks set to take on middleweight belt holder Israel Adesanya at UFC 293 in Sydney. With the injury to number one contender Drukas Duplessis, and all higher ranked fighters unlikely to be matched up because of their previous losses with the champion, Strickland remains next in line for a title shot. The matchup presents a fascinating matchup both in and outside the octagon. The two most outspoken fighters in the promotion that have drastically contrasting personalities and fighting styles. Hey, watch out. Oh, hey, what happened before we walked on stage? Hey, hey, I hey. I smacked you on the ass like my No man that the cartoons is gonna beat me. Bro, Calm trust down. me. If Calm you ever, down. I can tell you what, if you win this fight, when we fight, I knock you out, I'm gonna do a TikTok dance over your grave. Oh, look at this grown ass man on TikTok. Strickland will come into the fight as a heavy outsider, but that won't worry him. Sean loves to fight, he's a living example of personal growth and making the most of what you have. He found his lane in life, his indefensible interviews that border on lunacy would make him unemployable in almost any other industry, but he's shown how when given purpose what people can achieve. Strickland is real, whether it's his comments or his unconventional fighting style, he does it his way. That authenticity has garnered the respect of his fellow MMA competitors and fans alike. Uh, Sean Strickland has been uh, coming in hot, right? Mm -hmm. and. Uh, He's got the personality to match. You know, the dude's been getting on the mic, and I'm actually entertained by watching how authentic, authentic this guy is on, on, on the camera. So He used mixed martial arts to evolve past his inner prejudice and overcame circumstances that many wouldn't. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button, subscribe for more Australian sporting news content, or check us out on TikTok on the website. The links are in the description. Thank you for watching.